today's event. This is the first of two keynote lectures uh, we're going to hold, co-host in conjunction with Jill and the IAEA. And it's lead up to the Taking Charge conference that is being held in the Mansion House um, in, in November. And the theme of today and of the, next, uh, of, of the next keynote is in keeping with the theme of that conference. And they're both looking at the consumer-driven energy future. So today, the social dimensions of the grid and Dr. Anna Mangalini, this is a debate that is, it, it's time has come, it's time to have that debate. Um, you know, Ireland, uh, we are at the forefront of, of, of the smart grid, but our, our, our focus thus far has been on the technology of the smart grid, particularly in the area of security and reliability of supply and automation and responsiveness to, to I suppose, customer events, particularly outages in the grid and restoring supply after those outages and, and getting, you know, making the grid more adaptive. Um, I suppose the real challenge then is taking it beyond that and where, you know, the role of the grid in engaging the consumer. And I suppose that's still very much a, a work in progress. Um, I suppose in, in, in thinking also about the, you know, the journey that the uh, energy, the electricity system in particular, has, has come in the last 20 years and, and is going in terms of the role of the grid in, in, in facilitating a decarbonised electricity future, an energy future, the whole societal dimension of, of the grid. And traditionally, you know, costs, particularly grid costs, have been socialised across all categories of, of consumer. So as the grid becomes more the enabler of a very, very different engagement with consumers and customers can be on the grid, off the grid, partially off the grid, be, be prosumers, and what that means for the cost structures of the grid and what that means, how everybody then can participate, all of society can participate in the benefits from competition and new technology in the smart grid and the smart future is a key uh, debate that is happening today and that will continue to happen with policymakers, regulators and indeed the energy industry. And that's why today's uh, discussion and today's lecture by Anna is, is, is very apt. This year ESB is, is 90 years old, uh, so it was established in 1927. And uh, you know, the, the role that ESB has played in part of, I suppose, the evolution of, of, of the Irish economy and Irish society. And I believe that, that energy companies, even though ESB is a very different ESB to the one in 1927 or even the one uh, uh, 20 years ago, were, were, a, were a participant in a, in a much more complex energy market and energy setup. Um, we believe that energy companies still have a role in leading the transition uh, to, to a brighter future for society and, and, uh, and for the economy in terms of leading the transition to a low carbon future. Having said that, I'd now like to hand over to Alex maybe to introduce uh, Dr Anna. Thank you very much. Um, so our speaker, our very distinguished speaker this afternoon is Anna Mengalini, um, as Pat has said. Anna holds uh, an MSc in Chemical Engineering from the University of Bologna. Um, an MSc in Environmental Engineering, as well as a PhD in Energy Systems from the Polytechnic uh, University of Turin. And Anna, her main, uh, I suppose, professional experience has been in safety and risk assessment uh, of major hazard uh, installations. Um, and she has you know, gained, I suppose, through that significant international experience, both in the public and in the private sectors. Um, her interest has been, in particular, as Pat has flagged, um, in the human and social dimension uh, of technology, uh, focusing, uh, um, I suppose, her activities and research on these human factors and organisational uh, aspects uh, in safety. So, she, particularly, as Pat has said, timely um, opportunity this afternoon for us to hear from you. We're looking forward to your presentation. Um, but before starting my presentation, I would like to say a few words about my organisation. Um, okay, yeah, this is the presentation. Uh, the title of my presentation, and I would like to say a few words of my, uh, about my organization. I come and I work from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, which is an institute inside the European Commission. We have around 2,000 uh, scientists, and we cover many scientific disciplines uh, inside the JLC. We have, um, uh, and this uh, gives us uh, the role uh, to connect disciplines and policies, and uh, to talk directly to policymakers. Um, the GRC, as you can see, is located in different countries uh, in Europe, uh, in the Netherlands, in uh, um, Belgium, in uh, Germany, uh, in Spain, and in Italy. And uh, I'm located in Patton, and my institute specifically is called uh, the Energy uh, and uh, Transport and Climate Institute. Um, as you as already saw, so told you, the Joint Research Centre hosts uh, thousands of scientists that work uh, to support the uh, European Union policy. 
In, particularly, uh, in particular, I'm working for the, uh, joint research from the um, Joint Research Center Smart Electricity System and Interoperability. And uh, inside uh, this, uh, my team, uh, we have been investing resources and increasing capabilities on three strategic uh, research lines, specifically on, on observing, uh, simulating and testing, and assessing uh, the uh, power system, uh, um, the emerging power system, and the smart grid uh, development in Europe and beyond. beyond. Uh, in particular, we performed data collection on power system and smart grid projects. Uh, we have collected, and so we uh, host a smart grid uh, uh, database of smart grid projects in Europe, smart grid uh, uh, of laboratories in Europe, and we have also a DSO uh, observatory. Uh, we have also uh, testing and simulating uh, facilities to test and simulate uh, relevant green function on real demonstration projects. And uh, uh, we also perform integrated assessment on the power system. In particular, we perform cost-benefit analysis of smart grids. So we are involved in uh, the assessment of projects uh, of common interest. And we are also following the smart meter in deployment uh, in Europe. Uh, here, um, of course, our uh, being uh, an, an institute focused on energy issues, we are closely uh, uh, related and we perform our activities within the context of the energy union strategies. As you may know, the energy uh, union is made up of five uh, um, closely related and mutually uh, reinforcing dimension, and these are the energy security energy security and uh, solidarity, uh, the uh, fully integrated intel and internal energy market, uh, energy efficiency, decarbonization of the economy, and research and innovation uh, to drive the energy transition. After, since the launch of the Energy Union Strategy in February 2015, uh, the Commission has published several packages of measures to ensure that the energy union is achieved. In particular, and of interest for, our, for my presentation, uh, is the New Deal for the Energy Consumer that was uh, released in uh, um, July 2015. And inside uh, this uh, uh, communication uh, is spe specifically focused on aspect of the uh, consumer empowerment, on uh, smart home and smart networks, and on data protection and uh, uh, management. Following the New Deal for the Energy Consumers, uh, the, as you may know, the uh, Commission has uh, released a package of uh, uh, legislative proposals uh, in uh, November 2016, which is the Clean Energy for All Europeans, uh, that includes uh, several legislative proposals uh, that cover energy efficiency, renewable energy, the internal energy market, uh, security of, uh, of energy supply, and energy union governance. Um, one of the key points uh, of interest uh, inside the energy uh, union strategy and uh, the packages that we have mentioned earlier is, of course, uh, the role the consumer and community will play in the energy transition. And one uh, of the key messages, uh, as uh, stated in the, um, the Energy Union strategy, is that activating consumer participation is a prerequisite for managing the energy transition successfully and in a cost-effective way. We see, therefore, that the consumer are placed, uh, consumers are placed at the center of the energy transition and are recognized as being the key players uh, in uh, the successful uh, development of the energy transition. Another important uh, um, topic, a point that emerged in the clean energy package is that of local energy community. In the package, uh, the clean energy package, local energy community uh, have uh, a definition. They are, uh, are clearly uh, defined. And uh, what is interesting is uh, uh, to notice that uh, local control and value-driven rather than profit-driven uh, um, points, purposes, are uh, highlighted as uh, key um, features of local energy community. Indeed, uh, all our households, including the energy poor and the vulnerable consum consumers, should be able to benefit from uh, the energy transition, and they shouldn't be left aside and behind. 
and indeed the local energy community um, may have uh, uh, an important role in driving energy savings and addressing energy poverty. Uh, in uh, concerning energy poverty, it's also important to note that uh, uh, to stress the fact that the Commission has launched also a European Energy Poverty Observatory, and uh, uh, which should facilitate um, best practice, practice sharing uh, on how to fight uh, energy poverty. Uh, and of course, in this context, also member states uh, um, will be obliged to measure and monitor uh, energy poverty and to report it back to uh, the Commission. Uh, a brief introduction. We are talking now, uh, of course, about the smart grid. Uh, just uh, uh, this was the political, political context. Concerning the technical context, we are talking about smart grids. What are smart grids? There are uh, many definitions, many points of view. Uh, and uh, not uh, a um, agreed uh, common definition, but in general, we can define the um, smart grids and uh, as an electricity network that can intelligently integrate all uh, the users connected to it in order to efficiently deliver sustainable economic and secure electricity supplies. In a broader sense, uh, they are uh, emerging an emerging set of technology and practices which have the potential to uh, transform dramatically uh, the electricity system in Europe and around the world. Indeed, uh, the emerging electricity system will replace the tradi traditional paradigm of passive distribution with a new paradigm of active involvement of the consumers uh, uh, through incorporation of information and communication technology. What is important to note is also that uh, the emergence of, of electricity prosumers is seen as a fundamental. And here again, uh, uh, we are not talking anymore about <coughs> consumer, but about prosumer. And prosumers is considered as in a, broad, in a broad sense as all consumers that not only passively consume energy, but are also actively uh, participating in uh, the market, uh, <coughs> generating value for themselves and for other markets, uh, in, for other players in the market. Um, Okay, in the, la in the next uh, couple of slides, I would like um, yeah, to, to give you, to, to present you and to introduce you to one of our um, uh, main product of our observation activities, uh, which is the Smart Grid Project Outlook. Um, since 2011, the GSC has been uh, providing uh, the uh, policy makers and different uh, um, stakeholders with a tool to better understand the rapidly changing uh, scene and to, uh, to anticipate the direction that Europe is taking in the field of smart grids. Uh, the first Smart Grid Outlook uh, was uh, released in 2011, and there have, uh, there has, there have been uh, two, update, uh, two updates, one in 2013 and one in 2014. And the different edition uh, of the report um, were based on successive updates of the database. And just to give you an indication, uh, in 2011, we had around 220 Smart Grid projects in the database. And uh, in the successive update, uh, we reached 460 uh, updates in 2014. What is interesting in the uh, report is that uh, uh, we provide indication of how many projects uh, are ongoing in uh, Europe, uh, their geographical distribution, the source of financing, and the main stakeholders involved, and the main areas also of investment. Of course, you can find more detailed uh, on the on the web uh, site on our website uh, on uh, the the report. Um, but I would like to say a few words about uh, uh, the Smart Grids Project Outlook 2017. As I said, in 2014 we had uh, uh, around 460 projects, but in our update of 2017 uh, and through a very uh, in-depth uh, research of. Uh, what is going on in Europe on smart grids, we reached 950 smart grid projects. And they uh, sum up to uh, around 5 billion euro investment. Uh, we have looked into the source of finances of these projects and so to national funding, uh, European funding of private funding. We have identified uh, all the, the different stakeholders. We have a long list of stakeholders involved. 
and uh, um, we have identified the main uh, mm, the main area and domains uh, in which these smart, smart grids uh, um, are focused. In particular, as you can see, it's, uh, we have around 3,000 organizations involved in, the, in the, these smart grids projects and 800 implementation sites. Meaning, uh, for implementation sites, uh, we mean the location uh, in which the projects are uh, actually taking place. As I said, for this outlook, we uh, carried out a very extensive internet-based data collection and had uh, many contacts uh, directly with the project coordinator. Um, and indeed, uh, this, uh, this effort uh, led to the setup of uh, this uh, database, which, uh, which is one of the, which is the largest database of smart grid projects in Europe. So since the presentation today is focused on the consumer, of course, uh, our interest will focus mainly on projects uh, that uh, are whose domain is demand side management, demand side management, since uh, these projects are in inherently centered on consumer and allow for investigation of new trends in their strategies for consumer engagement. Uh, in the following few slides, I will present some results of uh, the analysis uh, we performed of uh, these projects, specifically on demand side management projects. As I said, engaging and empowering through, uh, uh, we are talking about engaging and empowering consumer, and uh, engaging and empowering consumer through better information is a key to behavioral change and to exploit uh, the full potential of the smart grids technology. Uh, of course, smart meter data can encourage uh, consumers uh, to become more aware of uh, the energy use, the consumption, and uh, possibly change their day-to-day -day, uh, behavior. Many people, uh, they don't uh, know exactly uh, how much energy they use and uh, in for which purposes. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, providing them with information on the energy use uh, can trigger behavioral change and, uh, uh, in their daily uh, activities. In order to increase the consumer's, uh, consumer's awareness and promote behavioral um, change, it is necessary to provide consumers with informative and detailed information in, energy, in their energy use. Uh, just to explain what we did in our analysis, uh, we tried to identify, uh, the, first of all, the most effective channels through which this information is presented to the consumer, what we called feedback solutions. And here, for feedback solution, we mean uh, in-home display, web portals, uh, ambient display. Then uh, we try to see what kind of information is passed uh, on the consumer, with what kind of information we should pass to the consumer in order to trigger um, a behavioral change. And uh, first of all, and then to meet their uh, their needs and their preferences. And this is what we call the feedback information. And uh, uh, then we focused on the way this information is presented. And this we refer to uh, um, feedback visualization, which can be historical comparison, for example, or peer comparison. So we try to identify, to classify uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, um, the DSM project, the man side management project that we had, and to see what kind of insight we could have in these three different uh, uh, aspects of consumer engine. Uh, here in this, uh, present in this uh, slide, I, I summarize uh, the consumer preferences uh, and uh, concerns. And I, co we, uh, I compare uh, the uh, results from, uh, the European, uh, from European survey surveys on uh, consumer preferences and attitudes with the finding that we have in the pilot projects. Concerning the three aspects that I was mentioning earlier, the feedback solution, feedback information, and feedback visualization. As you can see, there are different elements that, uh, that, come, uh, that come up. But what is important here to stress is that uh, the, uh, the European uh, surveys results are not always aligned with what we are, can see in uh, uh, pilot projects in, in the field. Indeed, for example, an example that very often come up, comes, comes up is the effect of monetary uh, incentive. As you can see from the European surveys, it comes up that monetary incentivizes consumers through monetary 
monetary uh, through uh, economic saving um, is uh, coming as uh, uh, one of the most uh, um, motivating uh, uh, elements. While, for example, in the pilot projects, it's clearly, it clearly emerged that other um, engaging strategies, such as uh, um, stressing environmental savings and social welfare, can promote consumer engagement. And so uh, you, you can see that uh, there are differences in the way a consumer can, can be engaged and, and differences in what we can find when we uh, ask consumers through th surveys or when we go into the field and really uh, deal with the consumers that are dealing directly with the technology. <clears throat> um, here I would like um, to present again in these slides uh, uh, again, how we went on to further explore the engagement and participation of consumers in Smart Grid's project. Uh, here we have used uh, uh, the same data set uh, of demand side management projects, and uh, uh, we tried to investigate if uh, the uh, we have seen uh, that uh, there is a policy interest uh, towards a more collective approach, uh, dimension of energy use. And we wanted to investigate if these uh, political as well as theoretical trends towards a more collective uh, dimension of energy use is also reflected in the uh, smart grid project uh, um, on demand side management in Europe. And uh, uh, specifically, we, 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 we wanted to test if there is a wide an attention towards the wider context in which the consumers uh, live and toward the social dimension associated to energy use and consumption. Indeed, our analysis confirmed, uh, as you can see from uh, these uh, uh, graphs, uh, that uh, there is uh, uh, the European, uh, that uh, these projects uh, are increasingly being designed and developed, having in mind a collegial approach to energy consumption. For example, we see that uh, there, are, uh, there is an increasing trend in involving uh, local, uh, local organizations and local partners in uh, uh, smart grid uh, projects. And uh, these local partners are mainly intermediary organizations that work closely with the concerned community. And, uh, um, and uh, they are so therefore uh, direct, directly dealing with uh, consumers. We also notice that uh, there are growing numbers of projects uh, addressing multiple end user sectors. For example, here we mean uh, uh, not only addressing uh, the consumer as, uh, and the household as an individual, but also in integrated into the, the project, also public partners, um, um, industries, and uh, commercial uh, um, uh, actors. Uh, this again uh, points uh, to in the direction of addressing households within a wider context where all the, the partners can build up a, a community partnership. The other interesting finding is that uh, there are an increasing number of projects addressing multi service. Uh, 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 addressing multi-service element, uh, uh, meaning that they also include, together with electricity, also gas, uh, um, water, and heating and cooling. And uh, this cross-service approach is in line with the idea of a multi-stakeholder and municipally-based uh, partnership, in which, uh, uh, which is at the core of the concept of smart communities. Uh, the other thing that uh, we, we checked, and so we see in the previous slides that uh, there is uh, this uh, interest in addressing the consumer more and more in their uh, social context, not as individual element, not as isolated uh, household, but integrated in, in a wider context. What we went on to, uh, uh, to look for is to see if there are differences in strategies uh, with which we engage the consumers. And indeed, we saw all, again that uh, the consumers are more and more addressed, not at uh, individual level, but uh, at uh, uh, more social level. Uh, there are, again, when the consumers are addressed as individual, uh, we see that there are always the economic interests that are addressed as values. And so what is called uh, in uh, psychology self-enhancing values. And so they address mainly the ego egoistic 
the economic value or the comfort uh, aspect. Uh, but we see that more and more projects are addressing uh, uh, wider values. Uh, they try to um, address also what uh, we call the self-enhancing values. That is to say, values that uh, uh, environmental values, for example, or social welfare values through different engaging uh, tools. Um, so uh, what we see again is uh, that uh, many projects try to mobilize consumer response using a more participatory uh, approach that builds on a sense of a community and of shared values and uh, goals. Uh, to conclude these uh, two slides, uh, what we wanted to point out, therefore, uh, is that uh, uh, we can see that a more collegial approach to energy consumer exists, even if an integrated approach is still missing. And of course, uh, we are still trying to find and to link these uh, uh, new and novel approaches to project results. But many projects are ongoing at the moment, and we don't have yet uh, results available. Uh, in the last couple of slides, I, I would like to mention something uh, about energy and, uh, and complexity. I think it's come something that came up also during the, the lunch, the fact that uh, when we talk about emerging electricity system, uh, we talk about, uh, about many things, uh, many, many uh, actors and different uh, point of view uh, uh, at stake. For example, uh, this is, a, a, on purpose, a complex picture because the electri emerging electricity system is a complex world in which uh, different layers uh, of, and different interests uh, uh, play. And, um, um, and indeed, uh, we think that uh, any complexity science uh, can contribute to the understanding of the emergence of the socio-tactical so, socio interface of the, uh, the emerging electricity system and can help in identifying tools and techniques for a better policy uh, decision making. And indeed, the complexity of the smart uh, electricity system rests on the multiplicity of interacting players that operate as independent uh, uh, decision makers with behaviors that lead to unpredictable uh, performance of the overall system. And uh, the actor, uh, and indeed the social layer, uh, is considered one of the most complex uh, uh, layer in the uh, emerging electricity system. Uh, and uh, in the social layer, indeed, the actors, uh, the consumers and the, uh, the actors interact through physical and social network by sharing information and learning from other, one another through social interactions. And this interaction produces self-organization and emergent behavior in energy consumption, and that very often can be unpredictable. Uh, we see more and more uh, that the current uh, modeling approaches do not cope well with this kind of complexity of the emerging electricity system, because the current modeling approach mainly focuses on only some aspect of the emerging energy system. And indeed, incorporating uh, complexity into the energy research can help uh, in uh, identifying emerging behaviors and uh, uh, challenges. Uh, I would like to say a few words again on, on complexity and uh, in the specific uh, which kind of uh, tools we can use for uh, uh, addressing complexity. Uh, the computer modeling approach advocated for complex adaptive system is called, uh, is defined agent-based modeling. And uh, in this approach, uh, systems are modeled as a collection of uh, autonomous uh, interacting entities, with have, which are, have encapsulated uh, functionalities, and they operate in a simulation in a computational world. Uh, indeed, ABM, agent-based mobile, is a popular uh, tool used in social sciences and is being more and more uh, considered as a suitable tool to address uh, the complexity of the social technical uh, interface in uh, the emerging electricity system that are uh, characterized by a strong interaction between uh, the human and the technical system. And uh, indeed, uh, the um, agent-based modeling is uh, considered as better uh, suited uh, so to, to uh, model the consumer behaviors. 
And uh, in particular, uh, we can model how values and beliefs uh, at consumer level can produce uh, changes at the macro level. And uh, we believe that this is a tool that can definitely uh, help us in understanding uh, the demand side of the energy system. On the right side, there is an example of a, a model that we have developed and is the, that specifically address smart metering uh, adoption. And uh, I don't want to go into the detail because it's a quite uh, a relatively complex, uh, um, talking about complexity, complex uh, uh, model. Uh, but uh, uh, what we try to do is uh, to uh, into make a uh, the uh, DSO, uh, the consumer and the social network interact. Uh, and we try to characterize, uh, mm, uh, to provide a social characterization of the consumer that has values uh, and concerns. And through the social uh, interaction with uh, his peers, uh, is able to uh, adapt uh, his uh, behavior and to ad uh, adopt uh, the technology or not. And we have seen a diff interesting uh, uh, finding uh, also uh, changing and giving uh, different uh, policy interventions. Of course, you, you can find if you are interested more uh, uh, information on uh, uh, this uh, uh, on the article that has been published uh, on a journal. And we believe that uh, this is, can be an interesting tool and can be also seen as a reasoning machine to uh, put together all the different elements of the system and to see how uh, we can um, let them uh, um, interact, providing them with uh, different rules and uh, um, elements uh, to play with. Mm. Uh, I have some uh, conclusion. I, I conclude my presentation. And a uh, few words saying that, uh, of course, uh, uh, the summary is that consumer and the community are more and more placed uh, at the center of the energy transition and of uh, the European uh, Union uh, strategy. We seem that uh, smart grid technologies uh, are believed and considered as uh, the technologies that will transform the electricity system and uh, the social dynamics and uh, energy consumption uh, patterns within our society. Uh, of course, there is the need to understand uh, better the, uh, and to engage the consumer. And this uh, uh, is, is done through different, uh, in different ways. For example, we have seen, we have uh, uh, analyzed surveys. We try to analyze what is happening in the field through the analysis of smart grids. But and some uh, times, uh, and uh, it happens that uh, the findings are not matching and are contradicting. And so this means that we need uh, to f um, further um, research uh, and further study uh, to really understand uh, um, this complex, uh, the complex nature of energy consumer and energy engagement, and also to. Uh, to consider also the importance of uh, contextual factors that can influence and cultural factors that can influence uh, uh, and, and consumer engagement and uh, involvement. And uh, more and more, uh, um, I think that it's necessary to have a multidisciplinary approach to emerging electricity system, because very often, as I said before, uh, the um, dominant uh, uh, approach is uh, the technical approach. Uh, we have uh, the system, and uh, the system, the technical system is uh, available and is uh, in place, and we have uh, to implement and let it work. But uh, this is not uh, so easy because uh, there are many other elements, and especially Especially nowadays, if we want to go into energy transition, we need more and more the involvement of the consumer. Therefore, there is more and more the need to involve other sciences, as for example, social science, to, in, uh, to understand better what are drivers uh, for consumer engagement. And uh, as I said, also to uh, help, uh, to, to ask help uh, from other sciences, as for example, complexity science, because we have too many elements at stake. And we need really to understand how they are interacting and uh, in uh, the complex uh, system.